Okay, folks, let's talk for a few minutes about ohmmeters of various types. Since we use them in HO for a few different classes, from super stock, where we have a, typically a 6 ohm rule, T jets, 15 ohm rule, and some clubs run a 3 ohm modified class. So we'll take this one first. This is a fluke meter. It's pretty old. This is I've had this for 25 years, and it's served me pretty well. But it's only one tenth of an ohm resolution. So if we take a green arm, it ohms at 2.7, 2.8. First, let's talk a little bit about the leads. These leads, I hate. You know how difficult it is to hold them and the armature at the same time and try and get a good reading. And you can end up damaging the commutator. So I've been making my own little probes for, for years out of small electrical connectors that are gold-plated. <clears throat> here's another one that I've used. And here's still another one. This is just lucite tubing with the end counterboard to fit the uh, fit the connector. Now the other thing about this, this is your basic handheld variety. Fluke is your your better quality uh, meters, but it has no button to zero the um, the reading to remove the resistance of the leads from your reading. So let's see what we've got. I've replaced the stock ones with 16 gauge wire, which is much heavier. So we've got a tenth of an ohm. But with the limited resolution, that could be 0 0.05 or it could be 0.15. We don't really know. So let's get back to that one in a minute. And we'll go over to this one, which I purchased in so early 90s. This one does go to hundredths of an ohm, one of the few handhelds I could find that did at the time. Now this does have a button to zero the reading. I take a little automotive fuse and just put it between the contacts and just by varying the pressure you can see how the reading can change. You apply a lot of pressure and get it down to right about zero. Now if I push this button here, this is the resistance we started with. And then we zero it. <clears throat> so even these wires had about two tenths of an ohm. But now we're going to read what the resistance is right at this point. So the green wire on the first meter, 2.7, on this meter, 2. 2.58, 2.60, floats a little, and it's typically due to oxidation on your commutator, since this is gold plated, there's really not much oxidation there, and it's a very fine point. So you definitely need to use enough pressure to overcome the contact resistance and get a true reading. And if we take a stock armature, that reads 6.03. By the way, it's 72 degrees in here, and that's a good time to do this test. Okay, so that's what we've got. <clears throat> With these, this meter back here, which we're getting a reflection in, this is a fluke lab quality meter. The difference between a lab meter like this and these handhelds is just day and night. I just checked the specs on the latest uh, fluke series, the 80 and 83 series handhelds and they guarantee on the they have a 600 ohm scale as the lowest and it's plus or minus 0.4 percent of your reading plus two digits 
and it's only tenth of an ohm resolution. Now, generally their accuracy is much better than that, but that's what they guarantee. So you could have a meter that's on the money pretty much, or you could have one that's reading a few tenths of an ohm different. So unless you're using a lab grade meter like this, which is plus or minus 0 0.012 percent, that's within two years of calibration, you can see there's a drastic difference between the two. It's, it's not even apples and oranges. So if we take that green arm and measure it on there, let's move these out of the way a bit. Two point six zero, just about exactly two point six. Point six two. So on the first one, what did it read on the first one again? Two seven, and if we subtract the, the tenth that we got in the leads, two point six, so it turns out this meter isn't bad. But again, it's only a tenth of an ohm resolution. So you could have the next one that's 2.65 or 2.64 or 2.56, and it'll still read 2.6 on that. So let's move that one aside. This, of course, also has a an offset button to zero the um, zero the leads. Let's move it up a bit. I just add my own little connector that connects to the positive and negative terminals inside. The reason I do that is I hate these banana plugs. These will take more current, but they're notorious for oxidizing, and you've really got to wiggle them around and make sure you've got a good connection. Since we're talking about very little current measuring the uh, resistance, we don't need giant contacts. Now let's take a, a 3 ohm armature and see what we have. 3.17. That's because I generally like to leave some leeway. I certainly don't want any of my customers to be disqualified. If they buy a 3 ohm armature, I want to make certain that it's going to be 3 ohms or higher. That's why, as I've said in the past, it's really crucial to use a reference resistor, whether it's an armature or a specific resistor, and use that same one throughout the season that anybody can take their meter. Let's say Harry takes his meter, and if he reads 2.9 on the reference resistor, and that's what they're going by, then he knows he can measure his armatures, and if they're 2.9 or above, then he should be legal, should be no problem. <clears throat> On the other hand, if you have an armature from, say, Yellow Finger Race Products, and it measures 2.9 or 2.8 on a lab-grade meter that's been calibrated, and you're checking it against a reference resistor, that armature is not legal, and you should take it up with the uh, with Yellow Finger Race Products. So we don't want that situation to happen. It's, uh, it's unfortunate, and we're running out of time, so we'll probably have to continue uh, at a later date. But that's a little, bit of, a little bit of information I hope's been helpful for different kinds of meters. Uh, handhelds, as I said, it's, um, it's just a different, different animal from a, a lab-grade meter. We might have time real quick to show an old unlimited armature where it really becomes important. The resolution on this is thousandths of an ohm, as you can see, 0.764. So you can really tell if you've got any difference. You can see they're within two thousandths of an ohm. And we're out of time.